Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we are going to build and assemble the longer 3D LK2. They OEM printers for other companies, so you might recognize this printer. Somebody else is also selling something similar. These are the guys who actually designed it. So stay tuned. The box, all the parts. So the the printer frame is below here, screen. I like the blue, blue's nice. A couple little bits and parts, SD card, here's a four gigabyte SD card. And there's our print bed. Yep, it is a plug-based print bed, so I'm gonna pull all this out of here, so stay tuned. Of all the components, there's your frame components, the frame of the printer, the Z motor, the carriage assembly, the hot end assembly. Parts out, the base is basically fully assembled, which is pretty nice. I like when they use these cardboard corner protectors because they really improve the survivability of the printer getting to its destination. In the box we have the base of the printer which is completely assembled. So, ow, that hurt. The power supply fully assembled, all attached, the boards all installed. Everything is open but surrounded by shrouds to protect you from the, force, the current. And the entire bottom of the printer is basically assembled and even plugged in. So we're just basically going to be building the printer on top of this. Here's your hot end assembly. Came with an aluminum plate with a piece of glass and fake tack on top. Yes, the Volcano Orange is nice. The build plate on mine was absolutely flat, so in theory I could apply a sticker directly to this and omit the glass altogether. I may try to do that if it looks like it'll work. Extrusions look good. The rod looks good. I'll have to check it for straightness once I take it out of the plastic. I like the blue finish. This is your right hand vertical um, uh, carriage. This is your left hand vertical carriage. I am not a fan of the ribbon cable. I really do not like these ribbon cables. They are prone to damage. Um, does have a eccentric on left hand vertical gantry which is very nice. I even like the fact that they use a nice die compression spring for their hot end. It does have filament detection built in it looks like. Yes, that's it right there. Is it a switch based one? It looks like it's switch based. And um, they also have a notch here, so it is semi-flex compatible. Your, whoop, your color touch screen, your spool holder. The bags are marked M416, M420, M56. They're all marked. Here is your bed screws, springs, and knobs, your clips, your memory card, your idler, and your zip ties, your tools, etc. This looks like an end stop, so this is most likely the x-axis end stop and the coupler. I would like to see them go to the newer style coupler, which is a little bit better than these springy style ones that don't tend to hold up very well, but I'll make that work. That looks fine. And your z-axis already has its bracket installed. We will see how straight that is when we go to put it on the frame of the printer. It even comes with instructions, and one of their ways to get around the Chingris issue is to eliminate words. So there's very few words, only where it's necessary. Otherwise, they mark everything with numbers, and everything is numbered on each panel. Believe it or not, that's a fantastic idea. That, that just greatly simplifies what's typically a pretty difficult problem. And they only have to add words where they truly need them. And by having a smaller number of words, it makes translation and getting the correct words better. So not bad. Good job, Longer. Stay tuned. Now we build the printer. So we're halfway done the assembly. Um, Unlike the Ender, this bolt here that holds the carriage plate on here, the vertical trolley, is actually in the way of this extrusion. So you have to bolt this plate to the x arm first. Then you can assemble it onto the printer. Don't forget to install your X or carriage. Make these tight. Don't over tighten. Be gentle, but you do need them to be tight and these to be tight. This bolts on. Slide it all the way in because you still have to install your belt. Plug your wires in. Don't forget to install your Z-axis limit switch. Motor installed on the back without a problem, no issues. That is for the heat bed. Um, SD cards on the back, we're going to want to remedy that with a SD card extension to bring it up front because that's just no good having that on the back. All your stuff plugs in here. Um, I would like to see you guys put a hole in this plate right here. Just a little hole right there in that plate which would permit me to put a zip tie in there and tension relief this to that plate so that it's not your wires acting as your tension relief. Because right now these are dangling by the tension on these cables, which means it might pull them out eventually as it moves back and forth. One of those wires has a 
decent chance of being yanked out. So by putting a hole in the plate, just drill a hole right there through the plate. And then I can take a zip tie and I can attach this to this. And now I can take all the pressure off these cables. So if this gets yanked, it's pulling against the plate and not pulling against your wires. Not a big deal, but something you should do. Um, let's see what else. I would like to see you guys go with the new clamp style coupler. This will work, but these do tend to fail. So going with the clamp style would be nice. Um, I would love to see you get away from this ribbon cable. I really hate these ribbon cables. They work, but you either need to go with the regular cable or pin this bugger down. You know, have channels for it to pin down because if this gets yanked, it's going to destroy it. They do work, but it would be nice. I like this plate. It is nicely made, nicely cut. I'm going to have to check your wheels. They feel way too tight because these were all too tight. I loosened them up, so now they flow nice and smoothly, no problem. Don't forget to check your width across here. Make sure it is 25 centimeters on top and bottom. Do your roll back and forth with your fingers. Make sure the right-hand trolley moves up exactly in sync with the left-hand trolley. If it's out of sync, if you see the right-hand trolley lag behind, that means your right-hand vertical trolley is too tight. Loosen up the eccentric nut and play with that. You don't want any front-to-back wiggle, but you want to make sure that when you move the coupler back and forth and move the head up and down, that it moves smoothly and does not lag. I did have a problem, two of the bolts going into this vertical trolley stripped immediately with very little force. I don't know if it was bad bolt, but I used all the bolts, so I don't think it was a bad bolt. I think it was poorly cut holes. Definitely going to want to use longer bolts, nowhere near enough of this bolt actually engaged threads in here. It, it is possible. This should be in that far, which is not a bad engagement of threads, but I would like to see it longer. And I noticed it's not fully engaging. You see how it's only white for part of it. So I think I may have gotten some badly threaded holes. It may have just been a fluke. So we'll have to see that. But definitely go with longer bolts so it goes further into the thread. Because you are applying a, a large amount of force to aluminum threads with a steel bolt. They will strip. So you do want longer bolts. Beyond that, so far, it seems to be working okay. Uh, no major issues. I'm going to continue with construction configured for 115 but don't forget check your switch here make sure you are set to 115 if you're in the US Alrighty, I've basically finished assembling the printer I think I have it all I would I re it came with these knobs for the bed leveling knobs so I replaced them with my stash of big knobs although I was not able to replace this one it is five millimeters too close to the stepper motor so I'm, I had to leave the stock knob on there. What I will do is I will 3D print a knob to put on there and just make it smaller. This way I can still have a larger knob, but it won't interfere with the stepper motor. This will go low enough to engage the aluminum bed directly if you adjust the Z-limit switch. But for now, I'm going to print on the surface it came with. And later on, I'll experiment with printing. If the printer quality is good enough to warrant it, I will put a sticker directly on the aluminum bed so that I can have a lighter bed without all this extra mass of the glass. Uh, I believe everything is plugged in. I tightened these all down as far as they would go. Brought this to the highest point on the bed, a little bit above it. I adjusted the Z-limit switch until it just engages the wheel on the side here. Locked it in place. Now I'm going to do my first power-up and see what happens. Stay tuned. <laughs> 